Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular monthly meeting for May 28, 2015 of the Scarborough Sanitary District. We'll start with roll call. Dave Nelson. Here. Charlie Anderson is absent. Nick Rico. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Rob McSorley is also absent. Seth Garrison. I'm here. Here. And I'm Chairman Jason Greenleaf. First off, we'll start with the approval of the April 23rd, 2015 regular monthly meeting Motion minutes. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any errors or omissions? Already submitted to Wendy. Right. Well, that's better than I did. I didn't find any, so good work, Nick. All right. All in favor of approval? I'm abstaining since I wasn't at the last meeting. One abstention. Next is the superintendent operations report. Dave? Okay. Um, <clears throat> the copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of April is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.7 million gallons per day. Our effluent quali quality was well within our permitted limits with averages of 92% and 96% for removals for both BOD and TSS. Uh, their average concentrations were 13 milligrams per liter and 7 milligrams per liter, respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of April is included in your packet. Uh, errant flow data for pump station 1 and 2 are reported due to the failure we had at pump station 1, which was reported to the last meeting. Uh, the Hingens Beast pump, sh uh, pump station shows a high peak flow, but I believe we, with the recent CCTV work, uh, we completed there. We have found the source. And finally, the Postal Way pump station reported some high flows, but that was due to a plugged pump. Uh, we did have an ODA complaint on May 7th um, uh, from a Mr. James Harmon, uh, who abuts the treatment plant at 419 Black Point Road. Uh, the weather, weather pattern at the time was such that the air had been very still for a couple of days, and the compost was being hauled off site. We stopped hauling compost and added more ash to the piles to abate the odor and, um, and uh, took care of the, the complaint that way. Uh, we have purchased one of the three polymer pumps that we've um, have budgeted for. We did a pilot test uh, which worked well with the gravity belt thickener. Um, uh, with the one pump that we have just purchased, we are now testing it uh, for a similar uh, use on the rotary press. And if it works out well there, we'll purchase the other two pumps that, to complete that one budgeted item. Uh, Woodard and Kern has been on site installing our new SCADA upgrade computer. Um, and that has been going uh, relatively smoothly. Um, we'll probably be uh, starting to test the new system within the next week or two. Um, Higgins Beach uh, uh, TV inspection, um, Ted Berry Company has completed that uh, inspection of the Higgins Beach sewer. Prior to this work being done, I notified the residents via direct mailing published an editorial in the Scarborough Leader, as well as notified dispatch. We did not receive any complaints as the work was being conducted. As I advised you, we discovered three broken sewer services, or apparent broken sewer services, all within the same area, a section of deformed gravity sewer, and one major II source from one sewer service, and six or seven other minor II sources, again, from other sewer service uh, taps. Other than those items, our, our, our gravity system was in very good shape and um, currently developing a plan uh, to repair the broken sewer services and address the major sources of II, specifically um, working with a local plumber. Our first step is to enter the houses uh, with the apparent three broken sewer services and the major II source, and we, we're going to TV the sewer service from the house back out to the street to uh, locate where the actual um, problem is. Uh, I've contacted, reached out to, um, and spoken with two of the four homeowners, and I have messages with the other two. So, so far, the, everyone's being very cooperative. Um, I have posted uh, the 2015 utility rate survey um, that I passed out at our last um, meeting on our website. Um, it is both under our home page and under the uh, rate tab as a reference for our, for our users. 
Uh, Carl and Paul have completed the installation of the large bubble mixing system at Pump Station 11. Uh, the system was included within last year's budget, but due to weather issues, we were unable to complete the installation until this spring. The system appears to be working as desired and we'll be monitoring, monitoring it closely. Uh, we received actually five resumes. I received one more resume after um, this was printed. In response to our advertisement for the labor operator position, uh, we'll be conducting interviews on June 2nd of um, some potential candidates that uh, myself and other staff feel uh, will meet our needs. And that is what I have for you under the superintendent's report. Thank you. Any questions for the superintendent? Ben. Uh, you said you were working with a local plumber. Is that someone we hired or someone the homeowners hired? We are going to hire them uh, to to, to uh, investigate the sewer services to see whether the, the problem is in the street uh, or on the property itself. Uh, with the three broken sewer services, or the apparent broken sewer services that we saw, it is likely that the break is right at the gap at the main. That seems to be where it, where it is. But before we start digging, we want to confirm that. Who are we going to hire for a friend? Uh, I'm reaching out to Steve Chamberlain right now. Thanks. Who happens to be one of the plumbers of one of the homeowners. <laughs> so oh. it makes it convenient. Yep. Any other questions? Nick? A uh, couple questions. First, on the pump station flows, we actually have the first column is total influent flow at the mm -hmm. treatment plant, mm -hmm. and I think the second through the fifth is all zeros. Is that a skater oops? That was a skater oops. Just checking. Yep. Thank you. And the other thing was on the pump station 11 wet well mixing. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering about the bubbler system. Does that add a little more load to the odor control system there? You're driving stuff out of the wastewater with the bubbles? Uh, actually, I, I think it's going to work in, in reverse. Um, I think it's going to take some of the load off of the odor control system because what it is going to do is to prevent the accumulation of debris in the bottom of the wet well and allow them to go septic and create odor. Okay. Just curious, is that the station you were thinking of putting a space cone in? Uh, not at that station. I would like to be able to locate one at um, pump station 2, which oh, pumps okay. to that station. Yep. Okay. Cool. That's all I had. Thank you. Other questions? Just one other one. The generator that malfunctioned, that is one that has been tested under load a number of times? Yeah, we, we load test our generators um, once a year. Uh, we, uh, we have our own load bank, and uh, we go out and do a load test on all of our generators every, every, every year. And uh, diesel generators, as you know, um, require a load, load uh, test in order to they, they get what's called wet stack if they're not used on a regular basis and be, be, uh, malfunction as a result of that. They, they, uh, but that one was most recently load tested um, uh, last fall. Um, this just happened to be the, the uh, injector pump failed. Any others? If there's no other questions, we'll move to correspondence. And the first item is the DEP incident report for May 5th, 2015. Uh, we had a sanitary sewer overflow which occurred at pump station 2, which is the Eastern Trail 138 Pine Point Road on May 5th, during which there was approximately 100 to 200 gallons of sewage that overflowed out of the wet well onto the grass where it percolated into the ground. There was no free flow of wastewater into the river. Uh, this overflow occurred because of a car hit a power pole on Pine Point Road interrupting commercial power and the generator failed to start, uh, which is the generator Seth was just asking me about. Our mechanic was not able to get the generator running that night. Uh, Onan service uh, came out the next day and found the fuel injection pump had failed and needed to be rebuilt. Uh, the generator had exercised successfully just four days prior to this event. Um, uh, and I have included a copy of the incident report within your packet. 
Any questions on the correspondence? None. We'll move on to old business, which there is none, and new business. The first item is Burnham Village, LLC. Mr. Chairman, um, the next two items under new business uh, were submitted by the company that I work for. I therefore think I should recuse myself from the consideration of the next two items. Noted. Thank you. Danny? Yes, please. Um, on behalf of Burnham Village LLC, Sebago Technics is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the proposed expansion of the Burnham Village Apartments, which consists of three new apartment buildings with a combined total of 32 apartments to be located off of Broad Turn Road. The existing apartment buildings uh, obtain sewer service via a private pump station, which is located off the end of Aurora Circle. The three new buildings will also connect to the station. The proposed sewer system uh, servicing the uh, apartment buildings is private and will remain private. It consists of approximately 360 linear feet of 8-inch gravity sewer, 180 linear feet of 6-inch sewer services, two manholes, and two manholes. I recommend approval with the following condition. This project is subject to the capacity reserve fee. The capacity reserve fee is based on single family residential dwelling units without accessory units. And additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The, cap the current capacity reserve fee per home is $2,917.76 and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee for the 32 dwelling units is $93,368.21. This fee is due prior to the issuance of the sewer extension permit. All gravity sewers shall be, um, have detectable under, underground utility marking tape um, placed approximately three feet below grade directly above. The pump station control panel shall be replaced. Remote communication of alarms, including loss of commercial power on to the on-call service provider shall be included as part of the new panel. The panel's functionality shall be fully maintained at all times. Final plan shall be amended in accordance with district standards, signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer and submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuing the permits. A sewer extension permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to the sewer, ex sewer extension work. A sewer permit is required for each building. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to per permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. Installation of the sewer service shall be inspected and approved by the district and professionally surveyed electronic geo-reference CAD drawings and a stamp PDF of the CAD drawing and a stamp paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached by the superintendent. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions on the project? With none. All in favor of approval? None opposed, one abstention. Great. The next item on under new business is the Leighton Farm Subdivision Phases 2 through 5. On behalf of Leighton Farm LLC, Sebago Technics is requesting district approval to connect and discharge to the sewer the wastewater from the proposed Leighton Farm Subdivision Phases 2 through 5, consisting of 74 single-family homes located off of Elmwood Avenue. The subdivision will be serviced by both gravity and pressure sewer systems. The gravity portion will discharge into a new manhole to be located on an existing gravity line and flow to the Elmwood Ave pump station. The pressure sewer portion will discharge into an existing manhole that flows to the Nonsuch River pump station. The sewer system consists of approximately 560 linear feet of 8-inch gravity sewers, 4 manholes, and about 1,600 feet of 3-inch pressure sewers. The sewer manholes and sewer service laterals within the public right-of-way uh, will be transferred over to the sanitary district upon completion of the project. And I recommend approval with the following conditions. 
This lot was part of the Eight Corners Development District. The parent lot was assessed for one single family home, which was subsequently co connected to the sewer. Uh, consequently, this entire project is subject to the capacity reserve fee. Capacity reserve fee is based on a single family residential dwelling unit without accessory units, any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per home is $2,917.76 and suggested monthly based on the ENR. Uh, the total capacity reserve fee due for the 74 dwelling units is $215,914. and $215,914. Uh, The capacity reserve fee to be assessed in accordance to the phasing as shown on the plans. The capacity fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit for each phase. Uh, positive displacement ownership. Uh, the positive displacement pumps and building laterals which are installed as part of the low pressure sewer system shall be purchased, owned, and operated by the property owner. The recorded subdivision plan shall include in the following note. The sewer service is by means of a pressure sewer system, and each building lot is serviced by an individual pumping system owned, operated, maintained by the owner. Owners and occupants of premises serviced by pressure sewer systems shall expressly, expressively release the Scarborough Sanitary District from all any and all liabilities associated with the use, operation, and or malfunction of the pressure sewer system. A copy of the recorded subdivision plan shall be provided to the district in both paper and electronic format. All sewer pipes shall be SDR 11 HDPE and shall be the color green. Installation shall be in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation. A stainless steel curb stop with integral check valve will be installed on the, the sewer service within the property boundaries at the property line. Valve box cover shall be embossed with the word sewer. Uh, all force mains and sewer services um, shall, be shall have detectable underground utility marking tape um, uh, placed approximately three feet below grade, directly above the sewer, and tracer wire installed on the pipe in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation. Provide a copy of the detailed zone analysis um, design data. Final plans shall be amended in accordance with the district standards, signed and stamped by the licensed professional engineer and submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of any permits. Sewer extension permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. A sewer permit is required for each house. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. Installation of the sewer service shall be inspected and approved by the district and professionally and survey electronic georeference CAD drawings, a stamped PDF of the CAD drawing, and stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions? Then. So on the phasing, um, we're approving it all now. So we're going to be coming back each time there's another no. phase, or this will be it? This will be it. And um, you talk about the homeowners responsible, and that's to the property line or to homeowners response. Our, our policy has been the, home, uh, the homeowners responsible for their sewer service up to the property line. Um, if there's a break within the public right of way, we've always maintained that as the district system gravity or enforcement. Okay. If a homeowner has a blockage in their sewer service, it, no matter where it is in the service, whether it's in the, uh, the, the right-of-way or in the, on their property, is the homeowner's responsibility uh, due to, in, in accordance to our uh, sewer use ordinances, they're not supposed to be putting anything in the sewer, down the sewer that can cause a blockage, so they own the <coughs> Just another quick follow-up question. Is that policy in our sewer ordinance? Or it is not. It is, uh, it is uh, just a policy the district has always has followed, and that's one thing I want to have a conversation or a workshop with the district on, or the trustees on. 
Okay. Yeah, because that seems like something we might want to formalize. Yeah. Other questions? Oh, All I, I got another question. Yeah. So, um, we don't we have catch basins? I mean, uh, manholes in the street for this? Or how, how, how often do we, I'm trying to figure, see it on the plan here, but I'm not picking it up. How, how often do they have manholes for that pressure sewer? Um, it, it varies. Um, there are, there's, there's always a manhole at intersections of pipes. Uh, there's a there's manholes at the end of each uh, location for um, uh, uh, for clean out to pump to pump into. There's at the high points and low points is both air release and vacuum release lines. And then in addition to that, typically we have a require a clean out within every 300 feet, but there's a manhole as a result of those other things and that breaks it up enough that we don't have any additional ones beyond that. So if there's a plug in the line, how, how do you know it's a plug in the line on the property owner versus the, the line in the... Well, if the other homeowners can pump, that's the, the indicator. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? No? All in favor of approval? None opposed and one abstention. Next item, Piper Shores Assisted Living and Arts Building. On behalf of Maine Life Care Retirement Community, FST is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the proposed construction of an expansion of the existing facility in order to provide 30 additional assisted living units as well as a standalone art building. Piper Shores currently features 160 independent living apartments, 20 assisted living units, and 40 skilled nursing rooms, and an additional 40 independent living cottages. The proposed project includes construction of a three story building addition with a footprint of approximately 21,900 square feet and a floor area of 48,900 square feet. The addition will be attached to the northern wing of the existing facility. The second floor will house 14 memory care units. The third floor will contain 16 assisted living units and a commercial kitchen. Flow from the kitchen will be rooted to a new 1,500 gallon external grease trap in addition to the above uh, addition, a, a new 3,000 square foot arts building will be constructed adjacent to the main building. I recommend approval with the following conditions. This lot is outside the original service area. Consequently, the entire project is subject to the capacity reserve fee. This fee is calculated as shown below and it's adjusted monthly based on the engineering news record construction cost index. Capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the extension, sewer extension permit. Uh, for the addition, there were 30 beds uh, at 100 gallons per bed, which uh, comes out to about 3,000 gallons uh, voice water flow and five employees with an additional 60 gallons um, of voice water flow from the employees. For the arts building, um, we calculate a, hundred, a flow of 120 gallons per day for a total uh, wastewater flow of 3,180 gallons. Total capacity reserve fee for that is $46,396.20. Uh, the approved average uh, daily wastewater flow for this project is the $3,180, not the 3930 that I have written in my notes there. Any future flows in excess of the approved amounts are subject to additional approvals. Um, at the pump station, a remote communication of alarms, including loss of commercial power to the on-call service provider, shall be provided. The panel's functionality shall be fully maintained at all times. All sewer pipes shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire in accordance with district standards. Final plan stamped 
signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. A sewer extension permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to the sewer extension work. A sewer permit is required for each, uh, each building. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. Installation of the sewer and sewer services inspected by the district and professionally surveyed electronic geo-reference CAD drawings, a stamped PDF of the CAD drawing, and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. I'll entertain a motion for approval. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, the caveats attached by the superintendent. Second. Motion and second. Questions? Ben. No, 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 no. Let's go Rob go first. Oh, Rob? Well, thank you. There. Uh, did they submit full plans or did you, they just submit this one sheet? You know, there's a bunch of plumbing plans and whatnot. It's, Is there any details or did any you legends? Get, yes, there were. You did not get the full sheet? I got this, just that one this sheet. civil sheet. These all appear to be plumbing sheets? Yeah. Is that all they submitted? And some details. What? And some details, yeah. Okay, I didn't get details. Yeah, okay. I didn't get any plan that had a legend on it. Okay. Um, question on this plan that I got, they state that they're going to be putting in a new grease trap. Mm hmm I don't see a grease trap. Center of the, on the center of the it's, plan. It's, it's no. there. I did, it's uh, shown on the Shown on the plan there. What? It is shown on the uh, utility plan. Yeah, it just doesn't show it connected to anything. Where, where on the utility plan? Uh, if you look at not for construction, take the end, you go straight up, and then over two inches in the middle of the plan. Oh, it comes out and goes back in. Well, where does it go to? That's just it. It doesn't yeah. show. They're, they have some cleanup to do on the drawings, <laughs> and I do know that. <laughs> well, um, and that's one of the reasons why I require final plans submitted to me before I issue any types of permits. Are they ready for? What's that? I just think I would expect a little bit more substantive plans when somebody's submitting for a approval to this board. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, I don't see any details. I don't see any legend. I see a grease trap that goes nowhere. You know, where's the nearest sanitary line to it? Right? I think pretty far away. Hmm. No, I would I had looked at that. If you I would, look, tend, I would if, tend to say they're not ready. If you look at P04, so I got to review building plans, not the site civil plan. Yeah. Lines on the site, private David? Yes, they are. Okay. Should we have a note on the plan to state that? Uh, we can add one. And I got a question relative to private systems. This is a pretty large private system, right? Yes. What do we do relative to making sure that uh, people that have such a large system? don't have infiltration or other uh, non-sanitary sources of water going into the system? Do we require any type of inspection? We do not, and we have not in the past. Um, it's one of the items that are on my, um, my desire list to get uh, all of these um, private pump stations permitted. Um, Is the lift station private too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
and that's one of the reasons why I'm requiring uh, remote communication on the pump stations mm -hmm. in order to ensure continued operation or protection of the environment in case of a malfunction. Because a lot of these private pump stations have, have in the past been approved for uh, just a local announcer and an alarm light. And typically what ends up happening is uh, the police ends up noticing the alarm light and gives us a call telling us one of our pump stations is malfunctioning. Yeah. No, they're not ours. In other jurisdictions, when they have private list stations, a lot of times it's a requirement that they submit an annual copy of a contract for maintenance that is the person who would come out and uh, be responsible for that. And that's something you may want to consider with the other stuff you're looking at. That's a I figured if you that's, were. If that's the board, what the board wants me to do, I certainly would love to do that. Can I add that to the motion? Well, that's not, that's for further workshop, I guess, for policy. Yeah, yeah that, that has not been district policy, but it's. Yeah. I guess I would add on to that as well, too, flow monitoring as yeah. well. Well, David, I'll do anything the pleasure of the board. But, you know, I'd like to see more substantive stuff for people seeking approval. Sort of related to this development, just a question. Do you have any feel for how much more buildable land they have out there? This is going to pretty much shoehorn shoe horn them in. Okay. You know. A lot of wetlands. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed a lot of conservation easement running around. Yeah. I had a question. Yes. So they, they're tying this cooling tower in. Is that, you know, it's, is there any flow to that? It's got there is some, some flow, but. There is some flow to that, and they, um, they're getting to, to me the characteristic of that flow, and uh, uh, once we determine what is the makeup of the cooling water discharge, uh, whether, number one, I'll allow it, um, number two, if it requires pretreatment or if it's something that just is of no concern. But I don't, I, you know, that's one of the items that they, they owe me at this point in time, and they're in the process of acquiring that data. Well, they just put it out and to the willy wax, like most people. I don't know. Especially if there's some potential, you know, some, you know, failure and contamination that can get into her system. That's probably why they don't want it to go to the... That's system. probably why they want to put it to oh. our system. Oh, Mr. TEP at the end there. <laughs> Additional questions? Yes, Next. I have several. First, to continue on the cooling tower, please beware. Just beware. Because one of the things that people do to maintain cooling towers is get rid of algae with an algicide. And that isn't very helpful to the bugs in our system. And that doesn't normally show up in one of those mm -hmm. one-shot analytical screens. Um, so that's something to look out for. Uh, I would agree with Rob that I don't understand these plans as well as I should, but... They're, they're a difficult plan set to follow. Um, I mean, and one of the reasons is because of how the structure is elevated above a parking ah uh, because i, I, I thought I, the structure I, was a parking I got lot that. yeah after a that's what was throwing me off that, you know the fact that they show a sanitary line going into a grease trap that there was nowhere <laughs> there's no legend okay. on the plan that would be helpful you know um there is a manhole that has a stub on it that needs to be plugged i don't know why and then there's another one. It looks like an existing sanitary line coming from a wood shop. Mm -hmm. And it seems to have gone nowhere until this new line that's proposed goes in. They're replacing a line. They're okay. Moving, they're, so, moving, they're moving a line. The old sewer used to go. Plug is down here, which is on one side of the building. Yes. Because, and it went under the building well, to that here. Building's not there. This is the new building that's being constructed. Aha. So Again, they're, they're confusing <coughs> plans. It would be helpful to know. And that's a building, not a parking lot that's proposed, yes? There's a parking lot underneath the building. Underneath the new building proposed. Underneath the building. 
What about at grade parking? Second level is the the uh, the building. The second and third level are, are the building. Okay, and this parking lot here? That's underneath an existing building. Underneath an existing <coughs> building. Parking lot under building. All right. I guess it says it. It's not very clear. Um, so that's replacing that line. Where the cooling tower? It's way off to the <coughs> left of the new addition. If you're yes. looking at your piece of paper, it's up here. Anyway, it, it, that would be helpful as well to locate where the Piper Shores is with respect to our sewer system because all we see here on this plan is just private, correct? You, all you see is If you private. want, I'll give you my phone. You can look at the map I looked no, at. No, no, that's all right. I, I can do that too. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. I don't it. understand what you're asking for. No, just a little key showing where, I mean, I know where Piper Shores is, but showing where it is in the town. They certainly can get us the full I don't need plan to set. I don't need um, to see the whole set, but just it's, it would be helpful yeah. to know how this ties in. I didn't realize Ty that Piper Shores has a gravity line that goes to our gravity line? No. They have a gravity, that, what you see is a gravity line that goes to a on-site pump station in Piper Shores. Ah, okay. Um, and then that, pipe, that pump station pumps to our gravity line at... Um, uh, on the top the of point? 77. Top of 77, that's 77. just prior to Black Point. All right. Good mm -hmm. to know. That's helpful. Thank you. Okie doke. I think you answered my question. Any other questions? With none, all in favor of approval. Opposed? No, I'm abstaining. Grab your abstaining. Yes, I am. Okay. None opposed, one abstention. All right. Next item on the agenda under new business is the four month budget summary ending April 30th. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to second. Any questions on the budget summary? Just a general question about the budget and financing. I think we talked about a couple of meetings ago. Um, the superintendent was going to work on a draft investment policy. Um, when do you expect that draft to come out? I am currently working with our council on that. Okay. Um, and so I should be getting something from them shortly, actually. Good, because I noticed our balance is getting over $3 million of all the accounts together, which is pretty healthy. And this approval will bring it even closer. Good. Any other questions? All in favor of approval of the budget summary? None opposed. Next on the agenda is public comments. We do not have any public participating this evening. The trustee comments is next, and I'll start down on my right with Rob. Oh, well, happy Memorial Day to everybody that uh, enjoyed it. And uh, we had a great parade and a good ceremony down to the VA uh, veterans' home. Hope everybody uh, did take time to uh, acknowledge and respect all those who have served for our country during this past weekend or Monday. I um, want to thank staff once again for their hard work and uh, also go a busy month coming up for our Scarborough seniors. Uh, good luck to all of them. I think we have a couple represented on the board here. And uh, hopefully it all goes well. And uh, thank you. You're finally going to get out of high school? <laughs> <laughs> no comments all set. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> You're not going to record that, are you? No, it's already done. Um, I'll echo Rob's comments and say, go seniors. Thank you. Uh, on What's a up? different note, I just wanted to uh, remark that I'm, I'm working with a utility right now that uh, serves about 2 million people. And uh, in looking through their policies and procedures, a lot of them are not as good as the ones that we have at the uh, Scarborough Sanitary District. <coughs> but, uh, uh, for the board and, and for the superintendent to be proud of that we're, uh, we're right up there with some of the larger utilities in terms of our policies and procedures and how we do business. 
Ben? I like Joseph's comments. Thank you. And no comments from me this evening. Uh, with that, I... Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion in the second. All in favor of adjournment. I will vote in favor of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We are adjourned. I just had to. You know that, don't you? <laughs>